Yeah, so I just have a theory that you know it takes a lot of snow, a lot of cold conditions push mule deer out, and it's not just random snowstorms that are going to push them out. It's not late October in Colorado is going to make them migrate. It's going to be deep snow conditions. They're still going to be up in the high country because they have all the you know nutritional qualities they need. The big bucks are usually still up there for this time of year. They're not migrating down yet. And so it was just get to these open areas where there's, there's feed, there's cover, there's water. They have everything they need. I think my boots are still going to be frozen though the entire time we're here. I think I'm gonna put my down pants on and just freaking hike up that cliff and down. That's where the deer are. hiked our butt off to get over this like nasty elevation gain. We're like 11,600 feet. Now we're at the best looking basin we've ever seen and we haven't seen a deer in it. And we haven't seen a deer all day. We've only seen a coyote. You know, it sounds so good right now. Nice warm mountain house next to the stove. Days like this, that's all you can look forward to. <laughs> first day we never saw a single animal but then we saw some deer at night which confirmed that whole theory that the deer are still up there spotted seven bucks and there was two possible shooters we weren't sure we didn't get a good look at them and it was just super dark so we wanted to just locate them again and see exactly what they were in the daylight we know there's deer here now even up at 11,000 plus feet in late October so reassuring It was kind of a, a what if game. What if they're down low? What if they're pushed out? And it was just kind of like, man, we worked so hard to get up here. Just kept our hopes high and, and uh, positive attitudes. Same group from last night, but we're missing two deer, the two biggest deer. Definitely doubts creeping in my mind a little bit about the area just because you know, a lot of the tracks we're seeing, we're back more towards where we were first glassing. But still, we're going on a nasty hike over to a totally new spot, which should be decent. We just kept traveling, trying to find deer and trying to find deer. And it's like, oh, let's go one more ridge. All right, one more ridge. One more ridge. Let's see what's over the next ridge. And Seth and I both, like, we always want to go further and further and further. So we just egg each other on the whole time. We might still move over some ridges and try to glass something else, get out of the wind for a little bit. But it's awesome country, best country we've seen so far. Kept looking at the maps and the GPSs and just kept saying, all right, let's go to this next ridge. So we ended up, like, it was like five and a half miles away from our camp. And this is not like five and a half miles on a trail. This is five and a half miles at 11,500 feet. But, I mean, it led to, it led to what, we, what we saw. Things are looking up. It's getting positive vibe right now. Things are things are moving. And we spotted nine bucks, but it was that last point that we were at, plus another couple miles down there. And we just knew there wasn't a way from our camp to get to those deer without without moving. It's going from where we were. We just killed ourselves every day. Like it was too far of a hike. We need to relocate and find a, find a new area into that spot, a little quarry where those nine bucks were, so we can hunt them better. Thinking, okay, this is one of those sanctuaries where they're going to be undisturbed. 
we, you know, we knew the deer were there, but then we didn't see a single deer. They either moved just a little bit more than we thought, or we just couldn't locate them. We just couldn't see them. Like, they still got to be here somewhere. I think I'm just going to sleep in the truck. Current situation is we're living the dream because we are too lazy to go put our teepee up because we don't know for sure if there's a lot of bucks in this new spot. I mean, this is gonna be definitely uncomfortable, but it's gonna be hot. Got her at a balmy 89 degrees. Going back the next morning, didn't have completely high expectations, not knowing exactly where they're at. But then just walking up over the rise, it just was like instant. And it was like, okay, game on right there. We got to get it done right now. Right, right below Brady, right, right here, right here. He's a shooter. One of the bucks from the other night. Down there. Big old body. Colorado tag field. Yeah. Just pretty. It's perfect. Yeah, he's, he's taller than Buck from two nights ago. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's the biggest one we had ditched footage of. He's, yeah, probably the second biggest buck we've seen. Yeah. And the other biggest one we saw was just a glimpse and last light. So it's been tough so far. Brady's turn now. Great. It's a it's a great great deer. Couldn't be more happy with it, and and just just really lucky to have that opportunity. It was it was a, a fun adventurous hunt. We wanted to see what else was around, so we decided to get a motel, get some Wi-Fi, and just look on some maps. I never expected to be in a hotel. Now we're on plan like C D E. Like we're not in like my core hunting area where I wanted to go. And so we decided, yeah, let's, you know, get our computers out, re reevaluate. I think it was just a well needed rest. Stuff basically across the private. Oh, so <laughs> uh oh, this is plan like C of the day, and it is like 1:30, 2:30. They really haven't got any hunting done because of it. so we're not sure what to expect but it, it looks good so far three and a half days left to uh, find a good shooter buck and there's plenty of days to get it done
the high life tonight, having some backstrap, mountain house, pasta primavera. Life is so good. Mm, so tender. Literally, I can never make a steak this good. Oh, this is living. This is why mule deer is amazing. Tomorrow, hard on the menu. Yeah. I've seen 31 deer this morning. I think six or seven of them are bucks and 14 elk. All the bucks are really small, like very small. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of deer, but a lot of deer are like very far away. And it's really cold this morning, which I think I would have thought would have seen a big buck. <laughs> so I'm not thinking, not, not, not so hot right now. I need to go deeper in again. Shaking the ground. <laughs> Those aspen patches below that to the left. Yeah, I can't really go yeah, I see four point frame. This might be a good deer. Exciting. Got a good buck. I don't know where he is right now because he kind of dropped a little, little ridge. But he should be still on that bench. And if we go now, we can cut him off before he you know, does something crazy. Nice shot. He's down. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> nice shot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, that was the craziest shot. How can I shot? I'm crying right now. <laughs> in the air for a long time before I heard that hit. <laughs> it's the best shot I've ever made in my life. That was a great <laughs> shot. The best shot I've ever made. All right, let's go over and check them out. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, he's a good buck. <laughs> oh, jeez. That is a heck of a deer. Chocolate horn. Do they have a little little kicker try to start? Oh my gosh, thank you, Buck. Such a cool cape on him, too. That's a stud. Yeah. That's what we came to Colorado for. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It, it couldn't have gone better. We couldn't have written a better script for it. I mean, getting to see what we got to see and the adventure, that's what it's all about. Couldn't ask for anything better. The rack's still awesome, but there's the whole adventure side of it is really cool, too. Yeah, nothing, nothing went to plan at all. This makes it a really fun, fun trip. Nice. Nicest probably since we've been here. Yeah. And then hey, we leave. <laughs>